Hi, hello, my dear friends. So, till now, uh, what we have learned from this new story, the evil eye of Shani. Uh, today is the third part. Uh, I presume it is going to be the last part also. So, from this story, this little story, we came to know that due to the dispute in between uh, Lord Shani and Goddess Lakshmi, uh, Shivatsa. Uh, Shivasta uh, Sribatsa was somehow uh, uh, was chosen as the referee as he gave the upper tier to Goddess Lakshmi than the Lord Shani. He was uh, jinxed by Lord Shani for three years. In this course, he had lost his all uh, possessions, earthly possessions, except his wife in the first uh, first half of the story. In the, uh, then in the second part we came to know that when when due to his wise uh, wise uh, decisions uh, decision he only he he only only uh, he cut uh, the sandalwood trees and he um, got a very good uh, lump sum money in comparison to the unwise or what should i say common uh, common woodcutter woodcutters so he and his wife was uh, thrown away due to utter jealousy this thing had happened again now in this time when the, uh, in, uh, in the next time when they arrived to a new village in the of weavers there his wife chintamani uh, sh- had shown her excellence in weaving as well as uh, sorry in spinning as well as as uh, in cooking and so she has to suffer the jealousy uh, je- jealousy um, jealousy of the local women women and in the meantime she was captured by a few boatmen who by some misconception uh, uh, thought that their stuck boat was released by the touch auspicious touch of the uh, of the ch- uh, chintamani so they captured her and while Srivatsa was in the when when uh, he started to uh, when he um, start uh, then after hearing this he started to search uh, go out for searching his wife and in the meantime he met with uh, Kapila cow and he was gathering the golden cow dung bricks actually where he has has engraved his name upon while that golden cow dunk or uh, were still soft in the state so let's start what happened next let's see leaving Srivatsa to arrange his gold bricks under the tree on the riverside we must follow the fortunes of his wife Chintamani was a woman of great beauty and thinking that her beauty might be her ruin she when seized by the boatmen offered to look Lakshmi the following prayer O Mother Lakshmi have a pity upon me thou hast made me beautiful but now my beauty will undoubtedly prove my ruin by the loss of honor and chastity I therefore beseech thee gracious mother to make me ugly and to cover my body with some loathsome disease that the boatmen may not touch me Lakshmi heard Chintamani's prayer and in the twinkling of an eye while she was in the arms of the boatman her naturally beautiful form was turned into a wild carcass the boatman on putting her down in the boat found her body covered with loathsome sores which were giving out a disgusting stench they therefore threw her into the hold of the boat amongst the cargo where they used morning and evening to send her a little boiled rice and some water in that hold chintamani had a miserable life of it but she greatly preferred that misery to the loss of chastity the boatmen went to some port sold the cargo and were re- and were returning to their country when the sight of that seemed a hillock of gold 
not far from the riverside attracted their attention srivatsa whose eyes were ever directed towards the river was delighted when he saw a boat turn towards the bank as he fondly imagined his wife might be in it the boatman went to the hillock of gold when srivatsa said that the gold was his they put all the gold bricks on the board uh, their vessel took srivatsa uh, took srivatsa prisoner and put him into the hold not far from the woman covered with sores they of course immediately recognized each other in spite of the change chintamani had undergone but thought it prudent not to speak to each other they communicated their ideas therefore by signs and gestures now the boatmen were fond of playing at dice and as ribatsa appeared to them from his looks to be a respectable man they always asked him to join in the game as he was an expert player he almost always won the game on which the boatman envying his superior skill threw him overboard chintamani had the presence of mind and that moment to throw into the water a pillow which she had for resting her head upon srivatsa took hold of the pillow by means of which he floated down the stream till he was carried at nightfall to what seemed a garden on the water's edge there he stuck among among the trees where he remained the whole night wet and shivering now the garden belonged to an old widow who was in former years the chief flower supplier to the king of that country through some ca- uh, through some cause or other a blight seemed to have come over her garden as almost all the trees and plants ceased flowering she had therefore given up her place as the flower supplier of the royal household on the morning following the night on which srivatsa had stuck among the trees however the old woman on getting up from her bed could scarcely believe her eyes when she saw the whole garden ablaze with flowers there was not a single tree or plant which was not begemed with flowers not understanding the cause of such such a miraculous sight she took a walk through the garden and found on the river's brink stuck among the, among the trees a man shivering and almost dying with cold she bo- she brought him to her cottage lighted lighted a fire to give him warmth and showed him every attention as she ascribed the wonderful flowering of her trees to his presence after making him as comfortable as she could she ran to the king's palace and told his chief servants that she was again in a position to supply the palace with flowers so she was restored to her former office as the flower woman of the royal household srivatsa who stopped a few days with the woman requested her to recommend him to one of the king's ministers for a bath he was accordingly sent for to the palace and as he was at once found to be a man of intelligence the king's minister asked him what post he would like to have agreeably to his wish he was appointed collector of tolls on the river while discharging his duties as river toll gatherers river toll gatherers in the course of a few days he saw the very boat in which his wife was a prisoner he detained the boat and charged the boatman with the theft of gold bricks which he claimed as his own at the mention of gold bricks the king himself came to the river side and was astonished beyond measure to see bricks made of gold every one of which had the inscription srivatsa at the same time srivatsa rescued from the 
boatman his wife who the moment she came out of the vessel became as lovely as before the king heard the story of shrivatsar's misfortunes from his lips entertained entertained him in a princely style for many days and at last sent him and his wife to their own country with presents of horses and elephants the evil eye of shani was now turned away from shrivatsa and he again became what he formerly was the child of fortune so my dear friends amar kotha ti furolo note gas ti murolo keno re note moroli goru te keno ghas khay na keno re goru ghas khas na keno rakhal घास देना क्यों रे रखाल घास दिस ना क्यों बो भात देना क्यों रे बो भात दिस ना क्यों खोका का क्यों रे खोका का दिस क्यों रे पिंपड़े कमरए कैन रे पिंपड़े कमरस कोट 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 सो माई डियर फ्रेंड्स हेयर इज द एंड ऑफ द इवल आई ऑफ शनि एंड फ्रॉम दिस स्टोरी वी केम टू नो दैट लाइफ कम्स विथ इट्स ओन blessings and sorrows if we keep our faith upon ourselves as well as whatever the form we love uh, whatever the form we love to show our gratitude our love to almighty he is there either to teach us or otherwise if we are not succeeding then he obviously he is going to help us and he is going to help us to come out from that very disputable situation so uh, this is what it is the moral of the story so please be safe please be happy and we will meet again in this slot again in the next week on sunday so till then tata